Trick or treat! Was a long time ago, longer now than it seems, in a place that perhaps you've seen in your dreams. For the story that you are about to be told took place in the holiday worlds of old. Now you've probably wondered where holidays come from. If you haven't, I'd say it's time you begun. Disney has released an official sequel to The Nightmare Before Christmas, but the medium might not have been what fans were hoping for. Fans may have been expecting a sequel film, but Disney Publishing managed to surprise them by letting them know that it would in fact be a novel. However, that's not the only thing fueling The Nightmare Before Christmas sequel speculation. Recently, director Henry Selleck commented on the possibility of making more movies in the universe. With rumors swirling and an official sequel hitting bookstores, the chances of a second stop-motion movie have never seemed more likely. Here's what you can expect from The Nightmare Before Christmas 2. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The story of the 1993 film followed Jack Skellington, the pumpkin king of Halloween Town, who was bored of doing the same thing every year. After stumbling through a portal into Christmas Town, Jack decides that Halloween Town will take over Christmas that year. Accompanied by his ghost dog Zero and Sally, a rag doll who plays his love interest, Jack goes about the task. Originally flopping upon its release, The Nightmare Before Christmas was a black mark on Disney's record. The film wouldn't die though, becoming a cult hit for a certain generation of movie watchers who likely caught it on VHS in the years later, to the point where now it's a mainstay of Disney's ever-growing merchandise machine. While the film did end on a conclusive note with Jack and Sally getting together, the Halloween town getting their snowfall to play in and Santa rescued, there was still a lot of interest in what was coming next for these characters. Recently, the director of The Nightmare Before Christmas, Henry Selleck, has commented on the interest in a sequel. The idea of a short has never come up in the past. Um, you know, a sequel had come up several times, and initially they always said, but it'll have to be CG. And that was a non-starter for me. It certainly was for Tim Burton. Um, I think that Tim might be open to a short, but he's pretty much been against a sequel. He just, you know, I, and I agree that it, it, it worked out and it would have to be so refreshing, something, such a new take to justify making a sequel, but a short makes good sense. It seems as if the time-consuming stop-motion animation Selleck and Burton want to maintain is making Disney nervous about greenlighting a sequel. But that's not where Henry Selleck's comments ended, he went on to say. Maybe a, a short that, that's a, about Zero, how his viewpoint of the world or a day in his life. Uh, I think that's a fantastic idea and doable. I predict Tim would back that. Disney Plus has opened a door for the studio to release more content intended to expand their universes, with several Disney franchises already expanding through shorts. So while Disney might be completely out of its mind for writing off a feature film sequel to the classic, it does look like Disney Plus has opened up the opportunity for the stories to continue through shorts. But the question then becomes, what would these sequels focus on? The obvious answer is the brand new novel Long Live the Pumpkin Queen, but before we get to that, it's important to note that The Nightmare Before Christmas has previously been given a sequel. Gamers of a certain age will remember the 2005 video game, The Nightmare Before Christmas Umi's Revenge. The story takes place after the events of the movie. Jack leaves Halloween Town in search of new ideas for Halloween. When he returns, he finds it under the control of the evil Umi Budi who has named himself the Seven Holidays King. Doobie's Revenge certainly doesn't have the most in-depth plot, but does have elements that filmmakers could adapt for potential shorts. After all, who doesn't want to see Ui Boogie return? While the underground video game certainly offers some creative ideas, the new novel seems likely the perfect blueprint for a Nightmare Before Christmas movie sequel. At this part of the video, we have to issue a light spoiler warning. While we won't be revealing any twists or major plot points, we will be discussing the storyline of the brand new Nightmare Before Christmas sequel novel, Long Live the Pumpkin Queen. We are going to post a link in the description so you can purchase a copy of the book, so if you want to skip ahead to avoid any kind of spoilers, check out the timestamps in the video's description. Long Live the Pumpkin Queen tells the yet-to-be-told love story of the newly married king and queen, Sally and Jack. Sally is thrown into the role of Queen of Halloween Town. Cast into the spotlight and tasked with royal duties, 
Sally can't help but wonder if all she's done is swap her captivity under Dr. Finkelstein for a new cage. The story is a coming-of-age story for Sally, as we see her navigate her new royal title as the Pumpkin Queen of Halloween Town. In this novel, Jack really takes a back seat. If you think of the original film being his story, this new novel is Sally's story. We accompany her as she meets new characters and discovers the truth about her origins. The new novel sees Sally travel to all of the original holiday worlds showcased in the original movie and beyond that. The novel also reveals that there are worlds beyond the forest, long-forgotten towns led by characters such as Father Time, Old Man Winter, and the Tooth Fairy. One of the most interesting elements of the new novel is that while Lock, Shock, and Barrel return, Oogie Boogie does not. This novel introduces a brand new antagonist known as the Sandman. The Sandman is a mythical character in European folklore who puts people to sleep and encourages and inspires beautiful dreams by sprinkling magical sand. Animation fans may remember the Sandman from his reimagining in Rise of the Guardians. In Long Live the Pumpkin Queen, the Sandman was once the king of Dream Town but an unkind ruler. He was the stealer of dreams, slipping into the human world and putting children to sleep so he could take their dreams. Children rarely had dreams as a result, since he would steal them as soon as they drift off to sleep. He was cruel and greedy, forcing the increased production of dream sand, as he stole millions of dreams every night. It originally seemed unimaginable that Umi Boogie wouldn't return for a Nightmare Before Christmas sequel, but after reading the novel, we have to say we think the inclusion of the Sandman was one of the best parts. The novel itself was written by Sheet Earnshaw with the blessing of both Tim Burton and Disney. The novel overall is missing Danny Elfman's exciting musical numbers, but that's what makes it prime for a cinematic adaption. You want us to break down Long Live the Pumpkin Queen in a full spoiler video? Leave a comment below and let us know. If we see enough support, we'll make that video. Disney has two of the most popular family Halloween movies of all time in its catalog. One of them was recently given a sequel. Now we wait for the other. While we were originally nervous about a Nightmare Before Christmas sequel, the Long Live the Pumpkin Queen novel has completely put our minds at rest. The novel proves that Halloween Town is rich enough to support many more stories from this universe. But now we leave it up to you. With rumors swirling and the story finally continuing, do you think the chances of a sequel are more likely? Would you rather see a film or a Disney Plus series? Leave a comment below and start a conversation. Don't forget if you want a full breakdown of the novel, let us know. Thanks for watching and happy Halloween.